Hey everyone, I'm AJ from Whole Latte Love, and in this video, I'm going to dive into the science of espresso, specifically what's happening in which parts of your extraction by comparing TDS readings and extraction yields from different segments of a shot. While I'm going to focus on espresso, the concepts in this video will also apply to most other coffee brewing methods. Fair warning, the testing is going to get pretty deep and pretty nerdy. If you're one of those people who just wants to drink your coffee and not think about it, this probably isn't the video for you. But if you like numbers and data and learning about the science behind your extractions, stay tuned. Before I dive into the test, let's get familiar with some of the relevant terms. It's important to recognize the difference and relationship between your espresso strength and level of extraction. Think of strength as the concentration of espresso in your cup, while extraction is the total amount of the puck that has dissolved into your espresso. These two variables are inversely correlated to one another. The part of the shot with the highest strength will have the lowest extraction. As the shot progresses, the strength decreases as it becomes more diluted, while the overall extraction increases because you're dissolving more of the puck into your cup. To measure this, I'm going to look at strength in terms of TDS or total dissolved solids. This is the percentage of a liquid sample that is composed of anything other than pure water, in our case, mineral content and dissolved compounds from the coffee. For reference, distilled water will have a TDS of zero, meaning that 0% of the liquid is made up of anything other than pure H2O. Our measurement for the other slider is extraction yield, which is the percentage of the dry coffee dose's mass that has been extracted into the liquid. Think of it like this, the dry puck in your portafilter represents 100%, and as your shot progresses, the more and more of that puck is dissolved into your cup, and you're left with maybe 80% of the solids that you started with in your portafilter. That would be an extraction yield of 20%. Roughly 30% of roasted coffee is made up of soluble solids, while the other 70% is insoluble solids. But more extraction isn't necessarily better. As a shot progresses, hot water is breaking down and dissolving different parts of the coffee grounds. First up are the acids and fats, followed by the sugars, then eventually the plant fibers themselves. These different phases present themselves as different taste characteristics in cup. First sour, then sweet, then bitter. In an ideal extraction, these elements will combine and balance each other out to create a well-rounded, balanced taste profile. Loosely speaking, most people aim for between 18 and 22% extraction, regardless of brew method. To confuse things a little more, you're probably used to hearing the term yield in relation to the output weight of liquid in your cup. Just note that yield in that regard is different than extraction yield I'm talking about today, which again is the percentage of your input dose that is dissolved into your coffee. So hopefully that makes sense in theory, but I wanted to take this a little farther with a real extraction. To do this, I performed a salami shot, which involves splitting up your shot into different five second slices so that you can isolate flavors, or in this case data, that comes from different parts of the extraction. I have a full video on this exercise that I'll link to down in the video description if you want to learn more about it. After dialing in my grinder, I leveled out the machine on the counter in hopes of getting an equal amount of liquid from each spout during the test. My plan was to complete the salami shot, measure TDS and calculate extraction yield for each sample coming out of one portafilter spout, while also collecting a control sample from the other spout that could represent the shot as a whole, and also let me know if my extraction was in the ballpark before continuing to test all of the other samples. I let my shot run a little long, all the way up to 30 seconds from first drip in order to get a full five second sample from six different cups. While I was hoping for a 50-50 split between the two spouts, I later determined that it was actually 53-47, but I factored that into all of my calculations in the end. I then used a VST coffee refractometer to measure my TDS for each sample. In order to calculate the weight of liquid in each cup before removing any, I put it on my Akaya Lunar Scale, zeroed it out, then after finishing with that sample, I washed and fully dried the cup put it back on the scale, and marked the negative reading as my weight of the liquid that was previously in there. Because I let the shot run a little long, my total output weight was 52 grams, which using an 18 gram dose,
gave me about a 1 to 2.9 blue ratio for the test and a 21.84% extraction yield based on the control shot. Note that salami sample number one, which represents zero to five seconds, had a TDS reading outside of the upper limit of the refractometer, which is 20%, because only a very small amount of water had been pushed through the most soluble parts of the coffee, resulting in a thick, syrupy, highly concentrated cup. Luckily, because all of my other samples fell inside the range, and I had my control to compare the overall TDS to, I was able to calculate and fill in the blank later. After getting all of my measurements, I adjusted the yield to best represent what flowed out of both spouts during that five second window, given my spout split, and calculated the extraction yield of each time range. First, let's look at the total dissolved solid percentage of each range. TDS decayed exponentially, with sharp declines between the first couple samples and smaller drop-offs in the later ones. If I had continued this shot even longer, it would have likely continued this trend as more water was pushed through the less soluble grounds, diluting the solution and resulting in a weaker and more bitter cup. Next up, let's look at the extraction yield versus time range. Remember that this is the percentage of the puck dissolved into each five second window. Considering our overall extraction yield for the full 30 seconds was around 21.8%, it's pretty wild that almost half of that happened in the first five seconds of flow through the puck. Note that the trend isn't necessarily as clean on this chart, and that's likely due to the element of human error when swapping cups, since chances are I wasn't hitting exactly five seconds on the dot between exchanges, plus that tiny little drop that ended up on the outside of the cup. This variance will be more apparent when looking at extraction yield than TDS, since the former factors in the weight of each sample collected rather than just the strength. If I stack that same data, here's a look at how much of the puck is dissolving into the cup compounded from the start of the shot through the end of each five second increment. You'll see the bars get smaller and smaller as the sample progresses. This is partially because there are less solids remaining in the puck to dissolve, but also because the ones that are left are harder to extract. What to do with this information and how to use it to improve your extractions is another rabbit hole and likely worth a separate video in itself. One quick conclusion is that when looking at extraction, the changes that are happening at the beginning of your shot are more pronounced compared to what's happening later. Accidentally stopping your shot a gram or two late might make your espresso very slightly weaker, but from an extraction standpoint, isn't going to have a massive impact on the taste, or at least not as much as changing other variables in your recipe like dose and grind size. Now I'm not saying that these numbers are a better guide than your own taste buds, and I'm definitely not saying to go out and buy a refractometer to measure your TDS and calculate extraction yield. But if you understand basic concepts of espresso, brew ratios, and how to taste under and over extraction, understanding these trends can help you adjust your variables to push the strength and extraction in the direction that you want. So I know this video was a little different than our normal ones. If you want more of this kind of content or have other things you'd like to see tested, let us know in a comment down below. And until next time, be sure to like, subscribe, and come back to the channel for more of the best on everything coffee, brought to you by Whole Latte Love.